guys, it's Ness. Can you believe it's the end of July already? Like, where is this year going? I think we know the answer to that. I'm here today with a combination of two videos that I would use you just separately, but there's not that much to haul. So I'm going to be doing my July haul and my July wrap up in one video. I'm also here with stronger fake lash glue than my last video. So anyway, I'm going to start with the haul side first because there's only actually three to haul. And two of these are actually gifts from Rebecca Reads and I feel like in every video that I talk about every book is a gift of Rebecca. Please, 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 I'm going to put her channel if, up here if I can in the description and the comments. Please, this person does so much for me and if you do like and support my videos, it's mostly content that's been provided by her in the form of book gifts. Please go and support her, subscribe to our channel, watch her videos like a few of them. I would really, really appreciate that. So we're going to start with the gifted books first. The first one is A Winter's Promise. This is a book that is a French translation and I've heard so many good things about it but can we just talk about how absolutely stunning this cover is. It's got so much detail on it. This is a YA fantasy novel. I don't know too much about it because I've not wanted to know too much about it and I'm just going to read what is on the back. It says lose yourself in a fantastic world of the arcs and in the company of unforgettable characters in this French runaway hit. A mix of awkward misfits and misunderstood genius, Ophelia cares little about appearances or other people's opinion of her. Can't relate. She possesses two special gifts, a talent for reading the pasts of objects and the ability to travel through mirrors. Her peaceful existence on Anim is interrupted when she is promised in marriage to the Tacky Turn Tachyton? What is that? Is that what? I've never seen that word before. I'm going to put it on the screen because I've honestly never ever seen that word. Is it just like a translation or? Anyway, phone. A member of a powerful clan from a cold and distant arc. That is honestly all it tells me. Maybe this is set in a fly and floaty world. I'm not sure. It's actually a lot longer than I anticipated that it would be as well. I thought this book would be about half the size. This is part of a trilogy. Like it says on the back, it's a hit in French. So I'm very excited to get through to this. I think this might be my first like translation book that I'm aware of. Thank you for this Rebecca. If there's one book that I wanted off my wish list at that time it was this one so thank you very much for getting it for me. And the second book honestly was probably the second most anticipated off my wish list and I have like 100 books on my wish list. So I don't know how you knew which ones I wanted the most but you've done like so well. And this one is my first N.K. Jemisin book. I spoke about this because I wanted to read it this month. I think this was the only book that I didn't actually get around to reading. I mean, I've still got like two days. Maybe I might finish The Deathless Girls in time and get around to reading it. And it is The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, which is book one of the Inheritance Trilogy. This is, like I've said, my first N.K. Jemisin book. I've never read anything by them, but I highly anticipate that I'm going to love this. This is an author that I've wanted to read from for the longest time. I've just not been buying new books for myself. Also, I've just realised this cover image here is very, very similar to A Winter's Promise. Like the idea of like a floating city in the sky. I've just never realised that before. That's a bit bizarre. This again, I'm not sure if it's YA or if it's classed as new adult, but it is a fantasy. It says, gods and mortals, power and love, death and revenge, she will inherit them all. What is it with me in names? Y-E-I-N-E. -E. Yeen. Da is an outcast from the barbarian north, but when her mother dies under mysterious circumstances, she's summoned to the majestic city of Sky. I've literally just been to the Isle of Sky, which is beautiful. Vlog coming soon. A palace above the clouds where the lives of gods and mortals intertwine. There to her shock, she is named one of the potential heirs of to the king, but the throne of the hundred thousand kingdoms is not easily won, and she's thrust into a vicious power struggle with a pair of cousins she never knew she had. As she fights for her life, she draws ever cl closer to the secrets of her mother's death and her family's bloody history. So it seems like this book is about a would-be like heir to the throne, and her she finds out like about her family history, and there's a power struggle to get to the throne. And I'm assuming some sort of murder mystery, maybe, about her mother. And this is honestly, I'm dying to get around to reading this. This one is actually shorter than I expected that it would be. So the next one, well, the last 
book to haul is a book that I got off my gran. I said on Twitter that my gran is currently only reading books that she's bought in supermarkets so she's now reading a lot of books that I know of because she reads just like a usually a lot of European crime. She has like two personas. She has her like a bloody side which is just like European really gory crime and she has like the Mills and Boone's nice little old lady books about like characters that live during the war and find like perfect husbands. So that's gone because she can't actually get to a, a bookshop, she's just getting books from the supermarket which are mainly books that are very popular at the time. So she's now passing actually books that I know on to me and this one for this month is The Binding. I think this was Waterstone's book of the month a couple of months ago. I'm pretty sure as well I saw someone tag this on Goodreads as LGBT but don't quote me on that because I'm not sure for certain. I don't even know what this is about because this is a book that I've not actually wanted. I've never looked into it because it is adult and at the moment I'm sick of reading adult fiction. But we'll just see what it says on the back. Emmett Farmer is a binder's apprentice. His job is to handcraft beautiful books and within each to capture something unique and extraordinary in memory. If you have something you want to forget or a secret to hide, he can bind it and you'll never have to remember the pain it caused. In a vault under his mentor's workshop, row upon row of books and secrets are meticulously stored and record. Then one day Emmett makes an astonishing discovery, one of the volumes has his name on it. That's the first time I've read the back and I'm actually really intrigued by this. She said a lot of people have read this who they didn't think this would be their genre and they've ended up really enjoying it. it sounds like it has a bit of a fantasy element to it but I'm not sure if it's sort of set to replicate modern life. It seems quite gothic as well. So I'm really looking forward to getting around to reading this eventually, don't know when that'll be because I need to be in the mood for an adult fiction. But they are the three books that I've acquired this month and I'm really really pleased with all three. So this month for me wasn't a great reading month, I didn't get a lot of reading done. But it's still four full books and one half a book. Well, not even half, like a tiny, tiny little bit of a book, but I feel like I've read enough to comment on it. For me, that's just not a lot of books, but it is still a lot for some people, so I've really enjoyed what I've read, honestly. Apart from one book, which I'll talk about first, because it's the first that I finished this month, and I read this within, like, the first one or two days of the month, and that is Dark Matter. I picked this up in my June haul, and I got this from a second-hand store. I don't really know why I got it. I guess I was just curious to see what it was about. I did read it and it was a very very short read. It only took me about a day and a half of actually sitting down to read this. It's an adult thriller with a little bit of a sci-fi element to it. I'm not going to say too much about it because the twists are there for a reason they're supposed to be like adding to the enjoyment so I can't tell you too much about it because the twists start straight away. This is a book about a man who's living with his wife and his son and he goes out to a bar and gets kidnapped on his way home and taken to this abandoned warehouse. He has a procedure done to him and he wakes up and he's in his body, he is himself but he's not in the life that he should be in. It's sort of like a parallel universe type where his wife isn't married to him and he, his son doesn't exist. And he's trying to work out which version of the world is his actual true self what is happening, how did this happen, is the other one a dream, is it some sort of state that he's created for himself because he finds out that he is a scientist. I didn't really enjoy this book, it felt quite flat for me, I didn't like the way it ended, I thought it was predictable and pretty naff if I'm honest, so I wouldn't recommend this. I think I rated this two stars, at least that's what the rating I'd give it now is at the time I might give it three but um, nah, I wouldn't really recommend this unless you are maybe into adult thrillers. Just for me, it missed the mark quite a bit. And really it kind of should have been something that I liked because I'm into like Inception. Inception is one of my favourite movies of all time so I love like the thought process about what is real and what's not. Like a Matrix type but I don't know, I just didn't really like this one. Actually you know what, I had a worse reading one from what I've initially realised because the next book was The Hazelwood which I spoke about in my TBR. I said it sounded a little bit like a fairy tale and it wasn't really that at all. This is a, I'd say maybe a new adult book and it's about this girl who lives with her mom and she has a grandma that she's never met but the grandma is a famous author and the grandma dies, her mom goes missing and she's trying to find where her mom is. There's got something to do with the novels that her grandma used to write, so her grandma used to write like fairy tale novels 
and she's trying to piece together the clues from them about where her mom might have gone. The Hazelwood is an estate with a forest on it and she thinks that by going there she'll have sort of solved the problem. But I got halfway into this and it just read like a crappy new adult contemporary novel. I just wasn't into it. I didn't like the main character at all. I thought she was awful. I didn't like the side characters. I didn't really like the way the character communicated. It's not the fairy tale esque book that I wanted. I assume it does get like that in the second half, but it took far too long to get there. So I stopped reading it halfway. I know that this book is very hit and miss. Some people really love it, some people hate it. Unfortunately, I was in the latter way. I didn't quite hate it. I just couldn't be bothered with it anymore. I felt like it was going nowhere and wherever it was going, it should be there by the first half of the book. But my next reads, thankfully, really pulled up this month from being a really rubbish reading month. So I tripped myself to reading the first book in the Heroes of Olympus series, which is The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan. If you know anything about this channel at all, you know we are a Percy Jackson stan account. Last month I binge read the Percy Jackson series and it took all of my effort to not just turn this month into a binge reading of Heroes of Olympus. <sighs> this is really hard for me to say, but I didn't like this book anywhere near as any of the Percy Jackson books. And I don't know why, I don't know if it was the new characters that I just didn't gel with. They weren't the same as Grover and Annabeth and Percy. And this book also was a lot longer as well. It's like double the length of the Percy Jackson books. And you could tell you've got the same level of plot, but it just felt a lot more drawn out. So unlike the Percy Jackson books, we have multiple perspective in this one. We have this perspective of Jason, Piper and Leo. Jason is like the all-American blonde hero. Um, at the start of the book he has amnesia, he doesn't know who he is, he wakes up on this school bus. He's with Piper and Leo, Leo says he's his best friend and he is of Mexican descent. Piper is of Native American descent and she is Jason's girlfriend at the start of the novel but Jason just doesn't know who he is and obviously in true Camp Half-Blood style everything isn't as it seems and they find out that they're demigods. It has the same theory as Percy Jackson where it seems like there's an overarching storyline with an enemy who we do meet at the end and the fact that we found out who the enemy in the series is that really pulled this book up for me and really piqued my interest because generally reading through it it just felt like I was reading the same Percy Jackson storyline three times in every different perspective and it was so drawn out. This definitely wasn't as enjoyable as any of the individual Percy Jackson books that I read, which I was very disappointed by, but I'm really looking forward to finishing the rest of the series in the hope that it picks up. And maybe this book was just introduction to the characters. I'm not saying it's a bad book, I still give this four out of five stars, I did enjoy it, it just didn't live up to my Percy Jackson expectation. But the fact that it, this exists I'm so happy about because we get to go back into Percy's universe, which I loved. Next was a book that I absolutely loved, five out of five stars, and that is Frost Hard by Jamie Littler. This is a middle grade book. I thought that this book would maybe take me only a couple of days to read, but this thing is long. I'm telling you, this is over 400 pages of pure enjoyment, and it took me so long to read. It took me weeks to sit down and finish, and that wasn't because it wasn't enjoyable. It was just that I read every single word multiple times because I was in so much enjoying what I was reading. I wanted to really absorb it, and it's over 400 pages. This book has had so much detail put into it from the cover, which is absolutely colourful, stunning, beautiful illustration. The author done the illustrations for this because he is also an illustrator and I really appreciated that. The spine, which is coloured and it's also very well decorated throughout, sorry, get rid of it, <laughs> illustrated throughout with pictures. There's pictures all over the place and this was just such a well finished book. The plot really does live up to the design expectation as well. The plot is so unique and I've never read anything like it. This boy here is called Ash. He's living in an outpost, sort of like a colony in this world which is snowy. Think of like the Arctic Circle. And this stronghold that he's living in, he's living there on his own as an orphan. His parents are pathfinders or were pathfinders. Their job was to go to different strongholds or find different strongholds, map the world and get trades and create alliances 
and they go out one time when Ash is a baby and they don't come back. So he's placed under the guardianship of this very grumpy yeti here named Tobu. He raises him and teaches him things and Ash comes to realise at this age that he is a song weaver. And a song weaver is a person that has the magical ability to speak to the creatures in the world that are bad creatures. They're called Leviathans and they are evil and try to pick people off the strongholds. That's why they live there and they're confined there because the world outside is full of monsters. But he has the ability to communicate with these monsters. However, in his stronghold, this is seen as a very bad thing. You don't want to be a song weaver. So they find out eventually and they say, you gotta go, mate. So he jumps on a sleigh, which is frost hot. And it's not just like, you know, a normal sleigh that you go down the hill in. It's like a ship. It has a crew. They work on it. It looks like a boat, but it is powered by magic and it can glide across the snow. So Ash joins the crew of the frost heart on the hope that on their adventures he may come across some clues about who his parents are or where they've come. This book at its heart is about friendship and family and the meaning of family and about a boy that's on his own and trying to make his way in the world and I really really love that. I've been so sick of reading romances and romance plots. There's such a good change and I would highly recommend this to everyone of all ages. It's honestly fantastic. Book two comes out in October as well and I'm so so excited to get my hands on it. I can't wait to read it. I would say that as well that's a fantastic entry into middle grade as well. The pure level of language in it is so good. I actually can't imagine being a child and trying to sit down and read that because yes the language isn't complicated but the book is so long and there's so much description. I can't imagine being able to sit down and read something that complex at that age. But if you've got kids, it would be a great book to read to your kids. Hey guys, so it's obviously like night time. I'm so sorry, but I realized that everything I just said was a lie because I actually read another book. I read Shadow and Bone, and this was the book that I took with me on holiday to the Isle of Skye. I don't know how on earth I forgot this. Like, I made this video, then I went to a family member's house for food, and I'm sat there eating a chili con carne, and then I'm like, Shadow and Bone. So I ended that meal pretty early because I wanted to film this because this is more important. So I read Shadow and Bone. I first read this book in 2015 and if you're not new here you'll know that I didn't like it. I thought that it was just meh. Uh, didn't really enjoy it. Couldn't remember what it was about. I thought it was like really like not something that was very memorable. Upon rereading it though I'm so pleased that I decided to reread it. I either had the option of getting rid of this and the second one which I haven't read or rereading this trying it again to see if I want to read the second book. I'm so glad that I didn't get rid of this in the second book because I read this and loved it so much more. It increased my rating from two and a half stars to four stars. This book is about, well what is it not about? <laughs> Our main character lives in this world where there are people called Grisha and they are magical beings and they have some sort of ability to control the elements or control materials. Our main character displays a trait of being a grusher. Quite late on in life she is in her teenage years and she is taken into their palace and trained in the art of being a grusher. However, everything isn't all as it seems. The head grusher guy, he isn't all that he seems. It's just a big adventure but I did remember as I was reading it some of the things that I didn't enjoy about the book which mainly relate to I don't like the main character and some of the way she treats other people or the way that she like speaks and communicates in the book. I think at times that she is very naive, stubborn or just downright being mean. But I'm definitely going to continue on with the series. I can't wait to get around to reading book two. Probably going to read it in August. I would now recommend this book if you haven't read it and you're a fan of YA. So after then, and finally finishing it, I started reading The Deathless Girls. You can actually see the smudge here that started my tweet to Waterstones, which was like petition for Waterstones to stop using stickers. I only wanted to put an improvement suggestion on Twitter. If they've chose to ignore that, that's their prerogative. I just won't buy books with stickers on anymore because this has honestly annoyed me so much. <sighs> the Deathless Girls. It's gothic and it's haunting and I think it's going to be an interesting retelling of the Brides of Dracula but I'm not really like gelling with the characters very well. It's very very slow to start. I really hope that it picks up. This is about 17 year old twins who are kidnapped and forced to work as slaves 
and when they are there they start hearing of this monster that takes girls as gifts and obviously does like scary things to them. I'm not quite at that part of the book yet but I'm not enjoying this as much as I thought it was. I've read a couple of chapters and I just feel like it's not really going anywhere which I'm so sad about but I still have a lot of book to read left. I'm going to continue reading this till the end of the month. I should get it finished and I'll put the finished thoughts about it in my August wrap up. But yeah, not a strong start for this one. So that's it for me today. Thank you for joining me on this quick video to talk about what I've been acquiring and reading in July. I'm gonna have a busy busy August because it's my birthday and I've got a lot of work to do so I might not get as much read as what I want to but obviously in my fashion I'm still gonna set myself an ambitious TBR. Let me know what you're reading in the comments let me know what the best read this month was for you. So thank you for joining me in this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!